8.4, parametric equations. So in this part of the class, we're kind of going to do a little introduction to some kind of smaller, kind of separate topics. So 8.4, I guess it's it's kind of a standalone section, although it has some a few other things we've looked at. But the idea in this section is what if you have three variables? So if you look at my first set of equations here, you see how x and y here are defined in terms of t. In other words, x and y are dependent on t. So t is called the parameter. And that's the independent variable. And then, like I said, the x and the y depend on the t that we choose. Okay, so one interpretation of t would be you could think of t as being time. So you could think of, okay, well, what is happening to the x and the y as time goes by, say? So if my goal is to graph this set of equations, one way I could do that would be set up a table. So that's what I've done here. I've set up this table. And I've already chosen some values of t. So again, t is the independent variable. So I can choose values of t so long as the x and y are defined for those values. So when I look back at these equations up here, I can see that x and y both are defined for all values of t. So actually I could choose any value of t that I wanted to then. So I kind of just started with a, with a typical choice, you know, negative two through two integer values of t. So let's see what the values are that I get for x and y. So the x is easy. So I mean, look, I can write the equation, the x is the t minus two. Okay, so this would be what? Negative four, negative three, negative two, negative one, and zero. And then the y is the t plus one quantity squared. So what would this one be? I guess it would be negative two plus one squared. So negative one squared one one, zero, this one, four, Okay, so when I go to actually graph this, I'm actually graphing coordinate pairs. I'm still graphing x, y pairs. So in other words, I'm looking at these two columns. So the point I'm actually graphing here is negative four, one. This one is negative three, zero, negative two, one, negative one, four, zero, nine. So where then does the t come in? So let's go ahead and plot these points and then let's see what happens. Let's see, so negative four, one. Okay, now that guy, uh, well, let's go ahead and plot the rest of them. Negative three, zero, negative two, one, negative one, four, and zero, nine. So I bet you I can kind of guess what that shape is, but if I need more information, I can always extend my chart. Like I can add another value of T here. See what this gives me. Negative five, four. So now I can see the symmetry. So it looks like it's parabolic. Okay, so let's fill in the values of t. So let's see, looking at this guy. So I'm at the point negative 5, 4, that's here. 
when t is negative 3, right? I'm at the point negative 3, 0 when t is negative 1. I skip this one. Let's see. Continuing. The sky is t is 0. And t is Hmm, let me see if I can fill this in a little better. This guy is t is 0, right? This guy is t is 1. That's this row. This guy is t is 2. Okay, so if you think about what's happening as time goes by, I want to fill in arrows to indicate which direction I'm moving. So, so I don't know. Say maybe this represents the... Uh, the path that a bug crawls along as time goes by, say. Okay, so, so which direction would the bug be moving? It would be moving in this way, right? Because as time increases, we move from left to right. So anytime we're graphing parametric equations, we want to include arrows to show the direction of time. Okay, so, so what are some other things we could see? Well, we could see this corresponds with t equals 0. So, you know, I could say this is where I started measuring time. Okay, and then, I mean, you could look at some other things. So you could say, let's see. So as we move from, say, time 0 to time 1, if this is, say, one second, in that one second, the bug has moved that far. During the next second, the bug moves all the way from here to here. So you could say the bug is, say, speeding up in between zero and two seconds, say. So the parametric equations give you a little bit more information because they tell you not only the path, but how the path is being traced out. Okay, so what is something else I could do? So I was thinking, what if I take the same equations, but I replace t with negative t? So I'm curious what that will do. So I'm looking up at my same set of equations, but I'm going to write those out with a negative t instead of a positive t. Okay, let's see what that does. So let me fill in my chart again. So now let's see, it's negative, negative 2, that's 2 minus 2 would be 0. Negative, negative 1 is 1 minus 2, negative 1. This would be negative 2. Let's see, negative 1 minus 2, negative 3. Negative 2 minus 2, negative 4. Okay, and then negative t plus 1 squared. That'd be 9. Uh, negative, negative 1, 1 plus 1 squared be 4. Negative 1 plus 1 be 0. And one. So let me plot the point. So again, when I'm plotting the points, I'm still graphing on the x, y plane. So I'm looking at the two columns on the right. So I have 0, 9. It's here. Negative 1, 4. Negative 2, 1. Negative 3, 0. Negative 4, 1. So again, I could include another value here, you know, if I wanted to. Let's see, that'd be 3 minus 2 be 1. And then, uh, yeah, actually, I don't know that I'd want to include this one. I already started it, but let's see. This would be 3 plus 1 be 4 squared, 16. 
So that actually gives me a point over here at 116. So maybe it'd be more useful to do three instead. What does that give me? Negative three minus two, negative five. And then negative three plus one is negative two squared is four. So negative five, that's the other point that I was thinking of there. Okay, so again, I can really, in, in my table, I can pick as many values of t as I, as I want to, just so that I have enough information to graph the shape. Okay, so let's see what's happening with time. So let's see, if I look at, let's look here, that row, zero nine corresponds with t is negative two. Okay, um, negative one four corresponds with t is negative one. Negative two one, corresponds with t is zero. Let's see, t is one, t is two, t is three. So this time you notice that as time increases, actually the direction has been reversed. So remember, I have to include the arrows here anytime I'm dealing with parametric equations. So this time, let's see, does the bug, time starts at the same point right but the bug is now crawling from right to left instead of from left to right so what if I just want a rectangular coordinate equation? In other words, I'd like to eliminate the parameter. So what does that mean? That means the parameter is t, right? So get rid of or eliminate the t. Find a rectangular coordinate equation. That means an equation in terms of x and y, but not t. So the equations that we've been graphing so far have been rectangular coordinate equations, equations that just involve x and y and not t. Actually, it's really easy to eliminate the parameter. All I'm going to do is I'm going to do a substitution. We've done this before. So remember, if you notice here, both of these sets of parametric equations, so where are they? There's this set and this set. These both give me the same shape. So I should actually be able to choose, you know, pair one or pair two to eliminate the parameter, I should get the same result. I'll pick pair number one here. So the x is t minus two. Let me copy this down. The y is, what was it? t plus one squared? Looks like it. Okay, so I'm going to solve one of the equations. So in this case, I'll solve this first equation for t. So I solve for t, and then I have to substitute that in to the other equation. So now I've got y is x plus 2 plus 1 squared. So that's x plus plus three squared. So there's my rectangular coordinate equation. So you can see, I mean, I can tell this is the same shape. 
This guy is a parabola, right? Shifted left three. So if I was just given the rectangular coordinate equation here, I mean, I could draw a graph. Okay, I mean, I'd have my parabola, but I would know nothing about which direction that, that this path was traced out in or how quickly. So the rectangular coordinate equation is a little bit easier to recognize immediately what kind of shape I'm dealing with, but it gives me less information than the parametric equations do. Should I try another example? So graph x is four sine t, y is four cosine t. So And make a table here again. Okay, so I'm going to pick T's. And then I'm going to fill in my X and Y. So I'm dealing with uh, trig functions. Copy that one down right. So I could start with, I mean, the domain of those is all real numbers, but I want to start with some kind of friendly values. So maybe I'd start with like multiples of pi over 2. Now I can always add to this table if I don't have enough information, say, but this would be a good place to start. So let's fill these in. So what is, let's see. For sine of zero. Sine of zero is zero. Okay, let's see. For sine of pi over two. That's four times one. Four sine of pi. That's zero. Four sine three pi over two. That's four times negative one. Negative four. Okay, we're going to get a pattern here. And let me fill in my cosines. For cosine of zero is four times one, four times zero, now let me plot my points. So again I'm plotting the points from these two columns, the x-y pairs. So let's see, we've got 0, 4, got 4, 0, and I've got 0, negative 4, negative 4, 0, then I'm back up at 0, 4, 4, 0. So look at what kind of shape I'm getting. I do a very good job drawing that. But looks like a circle. Okay, so let's see. This point corresponds with time zero. Then I'm going this direction because the next point that I encounter, this one is t is pi halves. This one is t is pi, t is 3 pi over 2, etc. So as time goes by, this circle 
is being traversed or traced out clockwise. Okay, so if I wanted to eliminate the parameter for this one, and write a rectangular coordinate equation. Actually, this one's really easy because I can tell you the equation immediately. Look at the circle. That's a circle centered at the origin with a radius of four, isn't it? So can't I tell you immediately the equation of the circle? Wouldn't it be that? Well, how could I show that? So let me see. So what is x squared plus y squared in this case? Well, look up here. The x is 4 sine of t. The y is 4 cosine of t. So what is that going to give me? Well, let's see, I get 16 sine squared t plus 16 cosine squared t. Then can't I factor out the 16? That leaves me with sine squared plus cosine squared. And isn't that 16 times 1? So look at that. There's that rectangular coordinate equation, which we actually already knew because the circle was actually rather simple. So actually, I mean, you can kind of make a generalization. So why don't I look, why don't I clean this up a little bit here? Let's just look at a couple other similar examples, but briefly. I'm just thinking about generalizations. So, like, I'm just curious, so I don't know, let's kind of... block this off. I'm just thinking, what about some other examples? Like, I don't know, what if I change something? Like, what if I changed and I put the x was 4 cosine t, the y was 4 sine t. So would I still get the same circle? Well, if you think about what I did down here, Yes, I would get the same rectangular coordinate equation, right? Because if I'm looking, you know, at x squared plus y squared, the only thing that would happen would be these two terms would be interchanged. So x squared plus y squared would now look like, you know, 4 cosine squared plus 4 sine squared. But I mean, I'm still going to get x squared plus y squared equals 16. So it'd be the same circle. But the direction may change. So I'd have to plug in a couple values, like, I don't know, 0 and pi over 2, to see what the direction was. But in terms of the shape, I'd have the same shape. So I don't know, what if I change something else? What if I put a different number in front here, like a 10? Okay, then if you think about what would happen down here, if I set this x squared plus y squared equation up, well, what would I get now? I'd have 10. 10. So let's see, that'd be 100, wouldn't it? Oh, 
So this would be a circle again with a radius of 10. So actually you could really make a generalization, which is whatever R I have in front here, as long as I have the same R value, I'd be dealing with a circle. Okay, so these would be parametric equations for a circle with a radius of R. And I could even reverse sine and cosine there. We showed that. So let me see, I'm gonna kind of skip that one for a second and look at this one here. See, this one says, find parametric equations for a circle centered at the origin with a radius of six. So this goes right back to the example I just finished. So I know parametric equations for a circle could look like this or like this. So all I have to do is put the radius in there. The radius is six. Okay, so there are two options. So how would I verify? I mean, I could show that this is true, because if I take x squared plus y squared, either of these Let's do the algebra here. Either of these, when I factor out that 36, I get x squared plus y squared equals 36, right? So that is indeed the equation of a circle centered at the origin with a radius of 6. Okay, so, I mean, I've answered the question. Then the only thing is, well, what if they ask me for specifically, okay, a circle traced out clockwise or counterclockwise, say, so which one would be which? So, you could just do a little table to check the direction. So check direction. So really I just need two values. So look, what if I do a little table here? Okay, I'm looking at this set. Okay, so I've got zero, let's see. 6 cosine of 0, that's 6 times 1. 6 cosine of pi over 2, that's 6 times 0. 6 sine of 0 is 0. 6 sine of pi over 2 is 6. So even if I just plot those two points, let's see. I'd start here at 6, 0. Then I'd go up to 0, 6. So you can see for this circle... The direction is, what is that? Counterclockwise. Versus, for this one over here, if I did a little mini table, just a couple values, let's see, six sine of zero, six sine of pi over two, six cosine of, 0, 6, cosine pi over 2. So plotting those points, I start at 0, 6, and then I go to 6, 0. So look at this circle is traversed clockwise. Okay, so there I have a couple options for parametric equations for that circle depending on which direction I want to go around the circle.
Okay, so what did we skip up here? Another graphing. Okay, so here's another idea. Um, okay, so here we have graph. Again, we've got trig functions. So again, I have to pick values of t. Okay, so I'm gonna start with my multiples of pi over two again. Let's see if I can come up with a pattern. Okay, so sine of zero, zero, one, zero, negative one, Zero, one. Okay, so cosine squared of zero, that's one squared is one. Cosine squared pi over two is zero squared is zero. Cosine squared pi is negative one squared is one. Zero, one, zero. So let me plot these points, 0, 1, call this 1, 1, 0, 0, 1 again, negative 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, hmm. So, I mean, what I can see is it kind of looks like, I mean, I'm going between these points, right? Back and forth. But I can't tell you what the shape is. I mean, is it a V? Is it like a parabola? Is it like a half circle? Hmm. So, my thought then would be, well, what if I try eliminating the parameter? Because I could probably recognize my equation if I write it in rectangular coordinate form. So when I'm looking at those equations, well, the first thing I notice is that my x is in terms of sine. So what if I write my y instead of cosine squared as 1 minus sine squared? using that identity, right? Because then I can actually do a clever substitution. I can substitute the x in for sine of t. So isn't that second equation really just one minus x squared? Oh, so I think I can see what kind of shape this is then. It's a segment of a parabola. So this is the parabola negative x squared plus one, right? So it's a parabola shifted up one and then reflected, right? So I guess I should say a reflected parabola shifted up one. So why is it that I only have a segment of this parabola? So let's see, here's my rectangular coordinate equation. But if you look at the x, you see how the x is defined to be sine of t? Well, isn't sine stuck in between negative 1 and 1? So actually, here's my rectangular coordinate equation. So it's an upside down parabola, but only the segment in between x is negative 1 and x is 1. Okay, so I'll try to make this look like a cat, like a parabola here. And then I'll just indicate, let's see, so we started here and then we were going this direction. I'll just use arrows going both directions just to show that we're stuck going back and forth on this segment of the parabola. Okay, 
And just one more. Find parametric equations for the line through negative 3, 3, and negative 2, 5. Okay, so my goal is come up with parametric equations. Let me plot the points. There's negative 3, 3. There's negative 2, negative 5. So my line would look something like that, okay? So there would be actually infinitely many ways I could write this line in parametric form because I could change, you know, the direction, go that way, or I could go that way. I could change where I start, like this could be time zero, this could be time 100. So in other words, I could change how fast that this line is traced out. I could change where I start time, and again, I could change the direction. So I could come up with infinitely many equations if I wanted to. But we'll keep things simple. So typically what I like to do is I like to pick the point on the left and I'll just say that's going to correspond with time zero. So at time zero, my x is negative three, my y is three. And then I'm gonna say, well, let's say that one unit of time has elapsed and I've moved from point A to point B here. So let me look at what's happened to each of the variables. So as that one unit of time has gone by, what has happened to the X? The X has increased by one. So that's increased by one for that one unit of time versus my Y you see how my y has decreased by eight for that one unit of time. So then I can check that I just plug in the points. So look, if I take my equations and I plug in zero for t, the x is negative three, the y is three. Okay, that's the correct point. Plug in one for T. Oh, there's the other point. So indeed, that pair of equations works. Okay, so I mean, if that's all I'm asked to find, I'm done. I told you, well, I can come up with infinitely many of these. I don't know how, how many I actually want to go into, but let's see. Let's do maybe a couple more things with it. Let's clean this up a little bit first. So in general, even, I could really give you a pair of equations for a line. So how did I get the values up here? These were the initial values, right? So x sub naught and y sub naught, in other words, the initial values of x and y for t equals zero. And then what are these numbers here? These were the change in x, delta x, the change in x times t and the change in y times t. So those would be the parametric equations in general for a line. So then I said I, I'd come up with maybe one more set here, just for fun. So what's another idea? So my other thought would be, what if I think of starting time here now, and this is time one? 
So I guess this time I'd be moving from right to left. Okay, so now the initial x value is negative 2. Initial y value is negative 5. So as that one unit of time elapses, now my x decreases by 1. And my y increases by 8. Either of those would be parametric equations for that same line. Let's do one more thing. Let's eliminate the parameter to get our rectangular coordinate equation for our line. So I should be able to use either of these. They're the same line traversed in the opposite direction. So I don't know. I'll take the first set. I'll solve for t. So I have x is negative 3 plus t. So t is x plus 3. Now I have to substitute this in for t. So then y is 3 minus 8. So 3 minus 8x minus 24. So there's my rectangular coordinate equation. You recognize that is the equation of a line in slope-intercept form. Okay, so I mean... If you look back at the picture, let's see if it seems reasonable. Well, the y-intercept is going to be, you know, way down here. That line is decreasing pretty quickly. And then let's look at the slope. So down 8, right 1. So slope looks good. And then you could even plug in the x and y pairs into this equation, double check those points are on the line. But I will let you do that.